cars suck. So what would happen if we banned them? There are a ton of reasons why a city or even a whole country might ban cars. The topic has been covered pretty extensively here on YouTube, we'll link to some of our favorite videos below. The gist is that even if they're electric, cars take a toll on the environment, fragment our cities and natural world, make us behave like assholes, and kill 1.3 million people each year. But we can't just get rid of them, or can we? This video is a thought experiment about what would happen if we decided to create a car-free future. It may seem inevitable or irreversible that cars dominate our cities, but that's just not true. It's only been about a hundred years since personal motor vehicles took over our public spaces, and we're here to argue that the car age is due to end. But okay, you might be asking, if we just straight up banned cars, what would we do with all the cars sitting useless in our driveways? How would we all get around? How would deliveries be made? Wouldn't everyone lose their goddamn mind if their cars were taken away? Let's investigate. What do we do with all those useless cars? There are more than 1.4 billion vehicles on Earth, and 19% of them are in the US. So that's 266 million cars in the US alone. That's a ton of now useless metal and electronics in this scenario. The good news is that cars are mostly made of iron, aluminum, and steel, all of which are valuable and recyclable. And recycled metal is really good for the environment and the economy. Producing new metal for construction and consumer products takes a huge toll on the environment. It's incredibly energy intensive both to mine and process ore, and mines also generate water and air pollution that can last for hundreds if not thousands of years even after mining has stopped. So a huge stream of metal recycled from now useless cars would prevent a significant amount of emissions and pollution. We'd also recover tons of rare earth minerals that are also really harmful and difficult to mine, and we'd greatly reduce the need for new rare earth mining overall since we'd be producing way fewer EVs that gobble them up for their engines. Recycling all those cars would also provide tons of green jobs in the first few years of the transition, possibly even balancing out any jobs lost by not manufacturing new cars, which honestly wouldn't be that many, since most car manufacturing has moved overseas anyway. There are currently about 923,000 Americans working in motor vehicle and parts manufacturing. And okay, almost a million is a lot of people, but it's only 0.6% or so of the total US workforce. And with all the new green jobs coming down the pipeline right now anyway, folks working in auto manufacturing will soon have the option of transitioning into any number of new skilled labor positions like this. And I know, I know, there are other potential lost jobs beyond manufacturing in this car-free world, but we'll talk more about economic impacts in just a minute. But for now, let's stay focused on the physical impacts. If cars were no longer occupying all of our streets and parking lots, what do we do with all that asphalt? While some roads and highways would likely still be maintained for emergency vehicles, cargo transit, and other logistical uses, most city streets would no longer be ruled by cars, freeing the space up to be used as common space by people who live nearby. Instead of busy, loud traffic corridors, imagine children playing while adults chill at nearby picnic tables. A real-life experiment with returning city streets to the people, not cars, is currently underway in Barcelona. Super blocks, areas where non-local traffic is banned. Deliveries can still happen. Public and delivery vehicles and local residents are allowed to enter and cross the superblocks, though their speed is limited to 10 kilometers per hour. But the streets in the interior are now free from most cars and can be used in new creative ways. The program's slogan is, let's fill the street with life. There are some great videos on the Superblock program that I'll link to below, and it's a super interesting model for what could be possible if we remove cars from the fabric of our neighborhoods. More life, more connection, more fun. With far, far less car traffic, a great deal of highway infrastructure could also be repurposed or even dismantled. This has dramatic implications for communities, especially communities of color that have been fractured by highways in the past. So let's tear those down, or turn them into community parks like New York City's High Line, a once abandoned elevated rail line that's now filled with plants and art. Imagine a world where this turns into this. Oh, and by not building new car infrastructure, we're preventing a ton of greenhouse gas emissions from construction. Building and then maintaining a lane mile of road results in approximately 3,500 tons of CO2 emissions over 50 years, when you account for the manufacturing of asphalt, steel, and other building materials, and transporting them to the construction site. For a 26-lane monstrosity like this interstate that cuts through my neck of the woods, that means 91,000 tons of emissions for a single mile. 
That's more than 18,000 people's emissions over that 50 year time span. And more is released when highways like this are expanded. Can we just stop already? In 2020, the US spent more than 200 billion on car infrastructure. This figure includes the construction of new roads and highways, as well as maintenance and operations. While some money would need to be spent to maintain some roads for emergency and delivery vehicles, more on that soon, we certainly wouldn't need 200 billion. And just imagine what we could accomplish with all that money instead. Things like building out a high-speed rail network to connect our towns and cities, creating bike infrastructure to allow biking to be a viable means of traveling both locally and between towns, and creating public transit systems that not only work, but are free or low cost. And for those who say that these changes can't be made overnight, you're right, but it can still happen pretty darn quick. Take a look at China, for example, who built out its roughly 25,000 miles high-speed rail system in a little over a decade, rapidly creating the world's largest high-speed rail network. This system has revolutionized people's ability to move around the country, even breaking the dominance of cars and airlines on many routes. And because air travel is a huge greenhouse gas emitter, trains over planes and cars would help us significantly lower our emissions. Let's be real. Getting around by car is not fun. You know what is fun? Riding bikes, lounging on trains, sipping champagne while enjoying the views of the countryside, walking a pedestrian-friendly city street filled with life. But hold up, what about people with disabilities who can't ride bikes or walk between destinations? How does this utopian future ensure easy mobility for these folks without personal cars? First and foremost, in my car-free future, any and all infrastructure will be built with the principles of universal design, meaning that everything is accessible for everyone of all abilities. All train infrastructure is built to welcome folks with limited mobility, sight, hearing, what have you. Ditto for pedestrian and biking infrastructure. In fact, just removing cars from the urban fabric would make it infinitely safer and more enjoyable for many more people to move around the city on their own. Many cities also already have what's called paratransit services for folks with disabilities who for whatever reason can't use public transit. At their best, paratransit services offer free or low cost on-demand rides. In our personal car-free future, paratransit services would be expanded to make them truly flexible and free for those who need them. And okay, here's another question. What about deliveries and emergency and service vehicles like trash trucks. Obviously vehicles for emergencies and essential services will still be using the roads and even vehicles for personal and business deliveries don't have to be totally eliminated. We can again look to Barcelona's superblocks as an example where through traffic, including delivery vehicles, are permitted in select streets on the area's periphery. But deliveries could also be more limited in this hypothetical future, especially in a world where we have more readily accessible and walkable shops and aren't necessarily purchasing everything online. Imagine a world where more pedestrian-friendly business districts like this were developed and going to the shops was a nice activity rather than a road rage-filled odyssey. Maybe we'd all be less inclined to order some much stuff online and thereby reduce residential deliveries and shopping's environmental impact significantly. But okay, you may be thinking, what about the elephant in the room? What about the economy? The automotive industry, producing and selling and maintaining cars, is only 3% of the US GDP. So if the whole industry just disappeared tomorrow, with careful planning, an equal number of jobs and economic activity could easily be created by the new industries that pop up and expand in their place. Metals recycling, public transit construction and operation, bike manufacturing, small businesses now thriving in our pedestrian-friendly neighborhoods. As a whole, Americans spend $698 billion annually on the combination of automobile loans and insurance. Imagine if that money were spent on other things. That's a ton of disposable income in Americans' pockets to do whatever the heck they want with. At a more local level, removing cars and putting more pedestrians and cyclists on the street has huge ramifications for small businesses. If driving to cement hailscapes like this is no longer a thing, and instead more people are encouraged to spend time in more human-scaled business districts, we can imagine that small local businesses stand a fighting chance of thriving, and we might actually see the revitalization of small towns and neighborhood business districts that in many cities and towns are languishing since everyone just drives to Target or Walmart or whatever. Providing street improvements for pedestrians and cyclists may increase sales in small shops and restaurants by as much as 30%. And this makes sense. 
If you're walking slash cycling by the same shops every day, you're likely to stop in, see what's new, and contribute to your local economy. So you're telling me that a country without cars would have a better economy, happier and healthier citizens, and we'd be closer to avoiding the climate apocalypse? What are we waiting for? Ban cars now. But okay, okay. I know that an outright ban is not going to happen overnight, but cities around the world are taking pretty significant steps in that direction. And who knows, with enough public support, we might be able to move closer to a future without cars, or at least so many of them. What do you think? Are you team ban cars or team let's keep destroying the planet? Let us know in the comments below, and I hope to see you in a future that's weirder, wilder, and maybe car-free.